These are seven of the coolest games on Xbox Game Pass that you don't want to miss. I'm a huge fan of Xbox Game Pass. I think it's very easy to use and it's great value. You pay for your Xbox Live Gold anyways, and now you get all of these games included essentially for free in that same monthly cost. And great titles are always coming and going on the Xbox Game Pass catalog. And these are some of the best ones that you can play right now that I'd be playing with my friends. First off, let's take a look at Far Cry 6. This is a brand new release on Xbox Game Pass and it's a huge AAA title that isn't even that old. It's a fully supported and next-gen compatible game for Xbox Series S and X, so you can expect some next-generation features, great graphic performance, and also so much more. But my biggest takeaway from this game is the fact it has online co-op. This makes it a great social title that has both single-player story missions that you can play in combination with your friends. And it's just a nice change of pace compared to, you know, it's an FPS shooter and going into a lobby and a map and sliding around in, in Call of Duty. Just gives you something a little bit more objective-based. And also you can have crazy fun driving around in vehicles, blowing stuff up, hunting different animals, leveling up your character, doing different crafting. It's incredibly cool. Now, the Far Cry franchise has a warm place in my heart. I've absolutely loved Far Cry 3. That was my first ever one that I tried back on the Xbox 360, then played it, years later on the PC. And then other notable titles include Far Cry 4 and of course uh, Far Cry 5. I played a little bit of this because that game is also available on Xbox Game Pass and I believe it got like a next generation upgrade too so the performance was slightly enhanced for people on the Series S and X. Next up is probably one of the funniest games I have played in the last year and that was Stranded Deep. Stranded Deep used to be an early access title that I played way back in the day on Steam. It was a PC only title then. You basically get stranded on, an, uh, on a desert island so you're like in the middle of the sea on this island and you, you know you like crashed airplane or something like that and you've got to essentially survive in this baking hot weather you got to get food you got to get supplies you got to build uh, you know shelters and you can also even go swimming now i wouldn't recommend going swimming too much because the waters are infested with the very dangerous animals such as sharks which me and my friend found out the hard way we were just in the little dinghy like going over to this other island we, we've had this great idea to change island literally on day one and next thing we know we were, we were getting shark attack we were absolutely rolling around love it this game is online multiplayer co-op so you you can play it alongside with a friend which just makes it a thousand times more fun and also easier because you have a friend to do tasks with it it can become a little bit mundane and boring on your own you know and you gotta go do all these different tasks build this build that cook this cook that whereas your mates can have uh, he can do one task i can do the other task super simple there's also unpredictable in-game events such as weather like very aggressive thunderstorms and if you're out at sea you can sometimes get caught in these thunderstorms and the, the waves get super aggressive and you, you get thrown into the water with the sharks very unpredictable but also quite intoxicating and fun to play. Graphically, it's okay. It isn't groundbreaking. It's quite basic, really. But I think the fundamentals of the game is what just makes it so enjoyable. And the fact you can you can just roll around laughing, not taking it too seriously, even though it's an incredibly serious uh, genre survival game. I would 1000% recommend installing this game. It's only tiny. It's a couple of gigabytes, so it's not going to take up too much space on your hard drive. And it's something fun and unusual, just like the next game, which is Farming Simulator 2022. Now, Farming Simulator is one of those games that sounds absolutely awful when you tell somebody about it, you go, oh, let's play Farming Simulator. And they, they, they keep thinking, what? I'm just gonna drive around in tractors and like plant crops and pick up some cows. And, like, who's gonna play that? But once you boot it up for the first ever time, you will instantly get addicted to this game and, and never put it down. There's something about it that's incredibly relaxing and also very fun. So you, know, you play all these other games, are super intense, super serious, you've got the leaderboard, you've got this competitive stuff. Hop on the farming simulator, got some super cool guitar music going on, like country music, and then you just go around, cruise around the tractors, and you can actually have a conversation with your friends. I usually find when I play games online, things get way too serious too fast. You're playing shooting games and you get really angry and it just doesn't unwind you. You've had a hard day at work, hard day at school, and you just get more pissed off playing games. Whereas on farming simulator, everybody's chilled out, nobody's got any pressure on them, you can do what you like, and you can actually have a, a really cool conversation just with your friends, catch up, see how they're doing. It's more fun than just going out and having a drink with them. There's so much to do in Farming Simulator. There's a huge range of different vehicles. You can cut down woodlands, you can build houses, you can cook bread, you can have chickens, cows, you, you can do anything. You can go to town. As well as there are multiple different maps that you can uh, set up different farms within so you can change the scenery. It's also got uh, seasons now so things like snow can hit in winter and kill all your crops and uh, the animals get too cold and you've got to go maintain different things. You can also clean down the tractors if they get too 
muddy to ensure that they're performing at a higher standard. There's loads of different jobs that all of your different friends can do on the farm. Everyone can have their own role. No one's competing and then you can just uh, go to town. Things can actually get a little bit chaotic if you don't uh, keep an eye on some of your friends. Now on the topic of things getting chaotic, the next game that I want to talk about is GTA 5. Now probably 99% of people watching this video have already got GTA 5 or played GTA 5, but I think that it's awesome that it's just basically free on Xbox Game Pass. Both versions of it. You've got the Xbox One version and also the Xbox Series S and X version, which was the latest next generation enhanced edition that they released sort of last year. Not much had changed too much. Graphics were a little bit better, but obviously it was pr predominantly a performance patch within the title. Now with the upcoming release date of GTA 6, just upon the horizon, <laughs> 2025, it's kind of close, I guess. I myself have kind of got a little bit on the GTA hype train and, and, and have revisited a GTA 5. Now I own GTA 5 on the PC and I used to own it on the Xbox One on disc, but having the access to the next generation version was super cool on Game Pass. I didn't have to buy it again. I just went ahead, installed it and reminisced on my childhood, went and checked out my character on GTA Online that I hadn't touched in about six years and uh, went and played some single player missions and stuff like that. So I think that's pretty cool. It's on Game Pass. It saves you having to purchase it again if you've owned it way back when on the Xbox 360, the PS4, the Xbox One or whatever. On the topic of trying out games that I necessarily wouldn't really buy, F1 Manager 2023 was also recently added to Xbox Game Pass. Now, I love the Formula One games when it comes to actually driving the car. You know, obviously EA owns them now, which is a bit, you know, whatever. But I used to love them when Codemasters had them. You know, F1 2023, super cool game. F1 2021, I played extensively. And F1 2011 and F1 2016, 2013, some of my favorite racing games of all time. But following in the same vein as Football Manager, there is now F1 Manager, where you take the role of obviously the team principal. So you're obviously uh, managing the drivers, you're managing the budgets for the teams, the upgrades for the cars, all the scheduling around the, the, the race days and traveling and all that type of stuff, basically the business side of the whole uh, whole thing. I personally wouldn't really buy something like this, but because it was free on Xbox Game Pass, just having a quick download of it, it was actually quite a lot of fun and, and a completely different perspective to the Formula One genre, which I thoroughly enjoy watching on the TV each weekend. This is definitely something that might be more attractive to my older viewers. And also I feel like it maybe works better on a laptop or, or you see my point, like you, know, you sort of build it up on your laptop while you're traveling and have a play of F1 manager, but it is on Xbox Game Pass uh, if you want to occupy your main TV <laughs> with some fake races. Now in this next recommendation, I'm actually going to give you two games. So this is technically eight of the best games on Xbox Game Pass. Now both of these titles are from Ubisoft, just like the Far Cry franchise, and these are both Assassin's Creed Origins and Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Now both of these games in the last uh, year or so have received next generation upgrades, so they're Xbox Series S and X compatible with much better graphics and way better performance. I love the fact some developers have gone back to old, very popular titles and increased the graphic settings and tweaked a few things here and there just to make this experience much more pleasurable for people with the newer generation hardware. Now both of these are pretty solid Assassin's Creed games. I personally love Assassin's Creed Origins but also hate it at the exact same time. I think it's got an incredible world, great storyline, awesome missions, gameplay's good, but it was the first Assassin's Creed where they changed the whole recipe of the game. You know, back in the day in Assassin's Creed, uh, you would have all the missions and you could just plow through the storyline without having to do loads of side quests to level up the character. Whereas in Assassin's Creed Origins, this was the first game back in 2016 or wherever it was, 2017, where they implemented this new ranking sort of system where you had to, you know, each enemy had a level. So you had to go and grind like crazy to get your character to a decent level to complete the main missions in the storyline, which encouraged people to obviously purchase microtransactions to level up their character without having to do all these side missions. When it first launched this game, it was so ridiculous. It was, it was virtually impossible to rank up your character without like wasting 15, 20 extra hours of gameplay to just get through the main story. Whereas uh, Assassin's Creed of yesteryears, you could literally never upgrade your character. Maybe, maybe get him a slightly better a sword or something or a gun and, and you'd be good to go. You could just plow through all the missions and it would be great fun because those games are more about how you approach the scenarios rather than the enemies having inflated health like ranks 52 and he's got this super crazy health so he just like takes a million hits. You know the old games all the enemies were just sort of the same health level and it was more about how you went into that mission and got out of it. So Origins has a bit of a split feeling within my heart. I, I love the game. It, it was a great Assassin's Creed but I hated that aspect of it at launch but my friend Friends have extensively played Odyssey and have uh, told me that it is fantastic. They've replayed it multiple times. You know, you've got the different characters you can play as, you've got the multiple choice interactions in some of the missions. It's, it's got quite a lot of stuff uh, going on. And I've just recently downloaded this and playing through the first couple of missions. I love the fact it's got the cool boats 
as well. You know, it's set in Greece. It's a very nice setting for the game. Now, my final recommendation is an incredibly unusual one that you just wouldn't expect, and that's because it's a very old game, which is Middle Earth Shadow of War. Now, this is a Lord of the Rings game that was released back in 2017 on the Xbox One and Xbox One X, which means graphically it still looks quite good because of the Xbox One X version, but I, fundamentally it's, it's a very, very old game. The reason why I'm quite enjoying this one is because I used to play Shadow of Mordor, I think it was called, on the PC back in 2014, like the first version of these uh, um, Lord of the Rings story player games. Loved that game to, to death. I played the whole thing, the whole, the, complete the whole game. Only thing I didn't like was the ending. Like literally it was a big boss battle that was just a quick time sequence. It was like X, X, B, triangle, and you beat the game. But I was expecting this big massive battle after all the hype that had been built up. But I really thoroughly enjoyed that first game. It was one of my favorite games when I was a teenager and I, it had a really good story and awesome gameplay mechanics with the different like things where you would like dominate a base. And if somebody killed you, they got all your skill points. And then you would have like an enemy thing with them and you could get them, adopt them into your own army. Very clever. And Shadow of War was just a continuation of the story for this game and picking up where I had left off back when I was a kid. Now, of course, these are some of the best games available on Xbox Game Pass. But if you want to see some of my current favorite games on Xbox overall, you should check out this video next so you know what to play.